friends uh, here to, so today we are on an insta live and uh, i've uh, been looking forward to this for quite some time we are inviting uh, dr atik bhatti on uh, our um, platform and it is uh, going to be really really in common and uh, there was so much i wanted uh, you all to be a part of uh, here is, is uh, dr atik hello dr atik <laughs> nice to see you so wonderful <laughs> to see you as well how are you all good all good i've been looking forward as i said i was i've been looking forward to having you on uh, my platform and uh, i uh, it's it's been a pleasure for someone who's always been the host i am so glad to host you here and yeah, to yeah, have to uh, hear from you <laughs> it's a funny feeling i tell you it's very strange feeling to be on the receiving end of the questions you know yes yes i i can i can understand completely understand <laughs> mm. yeah <clears throat> so dr atik bhatti is practicing in uh, the uk and uh, how many generations down dr atik bhatti uh, i'm a fourth generation homeopath so my father was a, a doctor of homeopathic medicine originally uh -huh. my parents are from india and uh -huh. my grandfather was a homeopathic doctor and my uh, great grandfather used homeopathy as well wow but, my, but uh, there was one other thing sharon uh, not to not to um, uh, this is by no means a boast it's just because you've asked the question purely but um <clears throat> uh, my great great grandfather was a herbalist and we traced back that his father was Ooh. also a herbalist and his father was a herbalist you know so. wow. wow 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 that's something to be proud of and you know these there are certain things that get passed down from generation to generation and i think it's really important i think for you to hold it really close to your heart and to also note it down because you know a lot gets lost uh you know while it's being passed down to the next generation so mm. i'll be very interested in everything you have to share with us today i think it's um it's very humbling you know but uh, <clears throat> it's it, i mean the history is there and and it's it's a very humbling place to be in because at the end of the day and and i know you're going to totally agree with this personally as a homeopath serving humanity by yes. helping people with their health is the best thing that can possibly you can do you know it's just beautiful yes. and it's magical and it's um, transformational and it's life saving and life giving and and it's it's wonderful very true very true very very true <clears throat> so uh, i think uh, the connection perhaps Sorry. is gone oh ah, yes, i can yes, hear you now you froze yes. there for a minute <clears throat> i can hear you so a little bit about you and what you do and what motivates you to do the things you do a little bit about you so as you've said uh, my name is atik ahmed bhati i'm a homeopath i have been for about 25 years now uh, i have a practice in uh, my hometown in the uk and i see patients online as well like every homeopath now post pandemic certainly uh, yes. so patients around the world <clears throat> local patients as well nationally mm -hmm. um europe seems to be quite busy at the moment a lot of patients calling in for help and i've done some um uh, in the early days i did a radio show i uh, sorry i did a um, television show on homeopathy mm -hmm. which was broadcast and um lectures seminars and i also host and produce the homeopathy health show podcast which you were on which was delightful and before i forget you are coming back in the new year um yeah. so yeah i've been doing that and <clears throat> that's really opened up you know it's opened up so much because 
talking to you know Dr. Gorang, Dr. Vijay Vashnav, Dr. Farooq Master, Dr. Rajan Sankaran, and so many others as well. I'm just the names I've mentioned specifically were oh, Indian Dr. names. Dr. Vermulen and Dr. Oh, I've been drooling over the people you've been talking to. <laughs> Seriously, it's it's just amazing, and their insights are, are incredible. So, my um, objective for the show, my mm -hmm. objective as a homeopath, is to promote homeopathy and to promote the homeopaths, to promote the students of homeopathy, to promote the home prescribers, because we need to work together, we need to collaborate, because there's 8 billion, let's say, people in the world, 8 billion people, and yes. there's not, not enough homeopaths. Of course there aren't, you know? Yes. And we need more homeopaths. We need the next generation of homeopaths. So that's why... Yes. You'll see on my Instagram, for example, it's it's quite heavy with the trailers and uh, guest videos yeah. and so forth, yeah. you know, because it's about getting that message out there, Sharon. And I think you're doing an amazing job. And I think, um, I think it takes, um, I don't know, I would not know what um, virtue to uh, define it with, but to be able to be a homeopath and help other homeopaths promote themselves is like an amazing thing, Atik. Is I don't know what made you think about this and plan it or even motivate you to do it and keep doing it. You know, it's a very interesting question and <clears throat> I actually don't have an answer, but there is, all I know is that there is this inner drive that I want to help promote others. You know, in, in political terms, they, funnily enough, they call it, uh, there's a word called kingmaker. And that means you help somebody, you lift them up, you help them. And that's also a service to humanity, right? To help yeah. homeopaths yeah. To, to get their message out there. And I, I, I don't know how it's happened. It's very organic and it's just happened. And I find myself in this situation where I absolutely love to do that. As, as you very well know, I just love to promote others. And, and why not? There are every single homeopath in the world has we are connected through compassion through love through service to humanity mm -hmm. so why mm -hmm. not promote them so that they can help more people i mean that's the best thing in the world right yes it is it is and very fulfilling um <clears throat> yeah i think that's that's the one thing i can you know say about this particular profession that it's very very fulfilling whether it is uh, intellectually, whether it is emotionally, whether it is spiritually, it's a very fulfilling profession. Mm, absolutely, it is. Every single day brings hope, brings good news, sometimes not so good news, but every day is full of hope. I always say to my, <clears throat> to my guests that on the podcast, certainly, that sometimes the phone will ring and it's maybe very late at night and it's been a very busy day in the clinic, but never frown always be grateful that someone somewhere has thought of you number one and then picked up the phone to ask for your help that is the yeah. humblest thing and the most should i say that's very humbling but also one should be very very grateful for that opportunity you know that yeah. someone has thought of you and they're thinking oh they can help me let me call them yeah, yeah very uh, wow that's 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 a lovely way to look at it um, I think I wanted to, um, I don't think there's any better person than you since you, you've been interviewing homeopaths all over the world and um, you seem to be the best person for me to ask what's trending. So <laughs> what's going on in the homeopathic world and what, 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 what's the difference in the practice, uh, you know, in different countries and in different places and the types of practice i would really like to know your insight in this wow that's a <clears throat> that's a very um very open question and there's a lot to say here so get ready for this okay so now if we look at just some of the guests that i've spoken to let me go through it that way you know so yeah. we have uh i was i one of my guests on the show was camilla Scher, who is the president of the finnish society of homeopaths and mm -hmm. what she does is her practice is um, homeopathy classical homeopathy mm -hmm. let's say um, or mm -hmm. sometimes even a mixture of homeopathy but 
as far as homeopathy is concerned. She mm -hmm. and her husband, Jeremy Sher, who, who mm -hmm. the listeners will know <clears throat> mm -hmm. from the Dynamis School, have opened up a clinic in Tanzania, in Africa, and they're providing free mm -hmm. health care to wow. patients there. Oh. Wow. Then you have someone like, like Colin Griffith, who is an author, and he has published several books called The New Materia Medica. Mm -hmm. And he's looking at, he has done new provings of new remedies, and he's mm -hmm. uh, produced a materia medica with the indications very much remedies for the 21st century and then you mm -hmm. have of course we know dr uh, shankaran for for the sensation method we know yeah. uh, dr Farouk master who is uh, you know an ace with materia medica we know jan Scholten, of course because of the periodic table of elements mm -hmm. and then there's the the joshis as well uh, mr and mm -hmm. mrs and you know the map system so what I've seen around the world is it's actually, Sharon, it's a very good question, very profound, because it's a mixture. And mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way I would answer that is that, look, homeopathy is an art. We're all artists. Mm -hmm. We all have the same tools. Mm -hmm. We have a canvas, we have a palette of colors, and we have paintbrushes, just as an analogy. And each of mm -hmm. us will paint his or her own beautiful, beautiful portrait every day maybe 20 mm -hmm. times a day. I'm talking as far as patients are concerned. Yeah. So there's different practices. Some homeopaths are, <clears throat> are using single remedies, very similimum based. Some are using simple and, simple and uh, single and combination. Some are using combinations alone. So it's a real mixture, you know? Mm -hmm. um, some are very complementary. Some are mm -hmm. using techniques which are very integrative. Integrative means a patient comes to you and they've got I don't know, uh, hypertension, let's say, and they're on mm -hmm. 10 milligram of, of a, a particular medicine, let's say, a, a pharmaceutical drug to control the hypertension. So integrative mm -hmm. here means you start them in homeopathy and then over time you taper off in conjunction with the GPU consultant, the, homeo the uh, pharmaceutical drug because homeopathy is taken over. And eventually, of yes. course, God willing, you know, the cure is there, you know, and the patient is cured. Yeah. So there's so many different variations and some people are <clears throat> some of the wonderful each of my guests has been wonderful including yourself of course you know the different techniques uh, some are integrating light therapy some are doing um, um, uh, iridiology uh, chiropractor practice as well so it's a real mixture Sharon veterinary so, but I tell you one too, thing. right veterinary and yeah. someone I, I think you had you had some you yeah, you had quite a lot in the farming. I, I, I just love that. So, yeah, let's let's move to countries, actually. So in New Zealand, um, I was speaking to a homeopath, Tanya Aroha Twentyman, who's a homeopath in, in New Zealand, and she's on, off an island off New Zealand. And she's doing in, okay. wonderful work, you know, helping people, motivating them, talking to them, and then prescribing homeopathic remedies. And then in wow. New Zealand, you have Tracy Simpson, who is a dairy farmer from birth. And she has now started using, not now, but sort of a few years back, homeopathy for her dairy cows. And that, wow. that's just amazing. And, and you, you know, on my Instagram, like underscore treats like, you can see those videos that she's sending yeah. me and, I, and I'm yeah. sharing yeah. them, you know? And that's yeah, just yeah, amazing. Yeah. And the cows are improving. And then if we move to the other side of the world, in Ireland, in Cork, you have um, uh, Pat Ahern, who's also called the homo homeopath farmer, and he's using um, homeopathy with his dairy cows, with his cattle, and on his um, field as well, you know, f to nourish the soil. And then moving back to Tanzania, Camilla Sher is well known for agri-homeopathy, which is to use homeopathy for plants, to use homeopathy for soil. And it's, it's just incredible, isn't it? And then you can move to a different part of the world and some like Dr. Anthony Pontus in South Africa. He lives just outside the Kruger National Park and he's using uh, homeopathy, but he's also using other modalities as well, natural health modalities. So, yeah, it's a real big mix and it's just incredible. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> wow. You, you, you've kind of got this amazing way of getting to know uh, you know, having your, what do you say, finger on the pulse and uh, enjoying it. It's, I'm absolutely it's amazing. loving it, Sharon. I'm loving it to talk to so many people 
and these are, you know, eminent, some of them are very eminent homeopaths, in, but in my eyes, everyone is eminent, right? Every yeah. homeopath is unique and it's a big blessing. But it's just wonderful yeah. because they share their story and, you know, they share what motivates them, what they, how they practice, and everyone has a story to tell and you can learn something from every single person you talk to. There was one more you had of um, <clears throat> someone who, who had a pharmacy. Uh, and yes, Tony you had... Pincus. Yes. Yeah, Tony yes, Pincus yes. did a three-part with me, a trilogy of podcasts, and he is the owner and chief pharmacist of Ainsworth Homeopathic Pharmacy. Now, yeah, I was jealous been... of that one too. Sorry? Yes. I was jealous of that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Tony actually has the official warrant from the royal household. So he is yeah. the official homeopath to the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, but also now to King Charles III. And, wow. uh, you know, that was amazing because he shared a story actually about how Queen Elizabeth contacted him. I mean, this is the mm -hmm. queen and uh, wow. invited him to Buckingham Palace to look at our homeopathic medicines to see if they were still, you know, um, current or useful. So, wow. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing. I... And, and he, he said to me, he said, that, you know, I got a call and, and, and it was like, oh, this is Buckingham Palace. And you think, pardon? And, and he actually <laughs> has the warrant to serve the Maj Maj uh, King Charles III. And King Charles wow. takes medicines from Tony Pincus for, you know, his, his animals as well. As you know, King Charles is, uh, before when he was prince, very keen advocate on homeopathy and, and everything natural. That's, that's <clears throat> actually really nice because I, I mean, so, um, I love collecting homeopathic medicines. So when he was on your show, I was like, oh, I think you have to introduce me to him. I want to know his collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get oh, yeah. to see, so you we, we can talk to so many. Freebies, but... <laughs> no, no, I don't want freebies. <laughs> so, you, you know, with, with the guests also, I've had sort of um, Luke and Manny Norlin from the School of Homeopathy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luke um, does a lot of work with Radar Opus, which is the software that is used yeah. for repertorization. Mm -hmm. Manny Norlin is the principal of two schools, the Homeopathy School and the Health School. And, very very inspirational in fact his podcast is out this week and you can uh, just go okay. to my socials to check that and hillary dorian is such an amazing teacher she's got this way of teaching which really sticks and she's been on the show yagoda saluska from bali i did a two-part a few weeks ago with uh jock mm -hmm. katyasa and yagoda saluska from bali and you know that was just amazing because they're doing a lot of homeopathy but they're also doing Balinese natural medicine and 95% wow. of people in Bali can you believe that grow up with natural medicine so they wow. they, they are home prescribers they they hardly go to the doctor can you believe that that's amazing 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 you know and then um, Roger Savage is coming up with Tony Jansen who does the human chemistry method which is detoxification uh, so many names Krista Rive from Buffalo in New York. She's an amazing homeopath, really works hard, you know, to get to the root cause of her condition. So yeah, it's a real mix. But what I what I know, Sharon, is since the pandemic, post-pandemic, mm -hmm. homeopathy is absolutely buzzing around the world. There's a real a, a wave, you know? And the mm -hmm. wave is, mm -hmm. we haven't peaked, of course not, not yet, but it's rising. Mm -hmm. Everybody is very much interested. And before, perhaps people were, very ignorant and said oh okay i don't know homeopathy i don't want to use it now they're willing to use it they're willing to use it and if they're not willing to use it they're willing to know more okay, okay i don't i'm not interested in using but tell me what homeopathy is that's an achievement mm -hmm. Sharon, isn't it that's a big yes, achievement. it is it really is um i almost um, mm -hmm. at one point was really worried um uh about the state of homeopathy and uh, the attitude and the laws that were, you know, uh, being made and um, the importance given to homeopathy uh, from, you know, the government and the administration. But then I, I see that change. Uh, I agree with you on this thing that, you know, the, the, the people are turning towards homeopathy. They're, they're now inquisitive or they're willing to try or they are uh using it now you know mm -hmm. so yes Absolutely. i agree to what you're saying uh, 
Um, Atik, would you like to talk a little about my favorite topic, case history taking? Uh, yes, absolutely. Let's go for it. What do you want me to talk about? Anything specific or? I'm, I'm, I, I am here to listen to you. I, I would really like to know what you, what's your take on it. Okay. Now, taking a case is the, one of the most important things that you can do, unless it's something that is very acute. And by acute, I mean sometimes it's a complex acute as well. But somebody rushes in and there's very little time and they're in a lot of pain or they've sprained their ankle. You know, those things are very, very easy, okay? We all know it's arnica, if it's not that, if it's, it's something else, if it's a nasal discharge, if it's a cold, a cough, uh, if it's just a panic attack, first time it's happened, you know it's arsenic and or whatever it is. You know, there's, everyone's different with remedies. But when a patient comes with a chronic condition, it's really, really important to not rush them. You know, one thing I've learned is that no matter how busy you are, if you let if you let the if you let the patient talk and express themselves fully it's a very organic process you know it's very fluid you'll find that the the remedy comes to your mind if you know your materia medica the remedy will 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 ping sometimes it's immediately when a patient walks in the door you just know you can just feel it or sometimes like i'll give you an example of that because i i just said something there <clears throat> Sometimes a patient walks in and I immediately know it's Nat Mio. I know there's an emotional link there and, and just by the way that they are, or you can tell, oh, this is very Nux Vomica, very business, very assertive, you know, very controlling. Um, or you, you can tell somebody is very calc carb or someone's very pulsatilla. Now to know that, of course, you have to know your Materia Medica and, and we'll, we'll go into that later. But we are very, people, patients are very used to quick fixes nowadays because of pharmaceutical drugs, medicines, let's call them. Drugs maybe doesn't sound that great. So pharmaceutical medicines. And they know that if they have a headache and it's, it's persistent, they would rather take a paracetamol or some other painkiller and live with it for, for months. And it, it's very important when taking a case to <clears throat> get the patient on board and you know, to talk to them, to explain to them that, look, this is the process. And there's no, uh, there's no harm in sharing openly with patients. This is the process. We are going to talk about this, this, and this. And we're also going to go possibly into the emotional aspect. And, you know, nine out of 10 times they'll say, why? What's that got to do with my headache? Or what's that got to do with me feeling uh, uh, low in energy? That's where the conversation, you see, it's an educate, a case taking opportunity is also an opportunity for education. And I think I think that's, you know, that's very, very important for the patient. And it's fine to have boxes, you know, uh, your condition, your concomitant, what's the etiology, what's the modalities, uh, location, sensation, whatever it is, that's all fine. And that needs to be done. It's part of the case. But one should make the case very organic. So rather than ask questions to do with, tell me, uh, when does it feel better? And, and how do you feel emotionally? let them talk, let them get it off their chest, and you've got a case. Of course, it may take some time afterwards to put it, to compartmentalize it for repertorization even, if needed. Most of the time, repertorization probably isn't needed because remedies come into the mind, you know, and uh, a materia medica will be sufficient to check. <clears throat> Certainly, that's, that's one of the ways I work. Sometimes I have to repertorize. Sometimes it just pops into my head. I think that's the medicine for you. That's because... You know? Because you've got four generations of legacy. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I think, come on. Yes, 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 for sure. Uh, it just comes, it clicks because of that. This is something that you you will have to, um, it's, it's something we have to work at and you have got, I, I was looking at the books you have and I was like, oh, Dick. I want you to share a little about your Materia Medica. I, I would really like to know what... So, I'll you, you are so Hold lucky. Let's have, let's have some fun. Hold on. Let me just share <laughs> one of the books. Okay? Just so you know. All right? So that's one of the ones in the video. Yeah, I have to be yes. very careful because it's very old now. And this is my father purchased in 1935, this one. Isn't this the Borlins one? 
No, this is by Jay Laurie, Epitome of the Homeopathic Domestic, oh, sorry, Domestic Medicine. Ah. Uh. And, and it's so wonderful the way it's written. So I look, I've just opened up and I can still see some of my father's notes on here and ulcerated sore throat. Wow, which remedy is that? It's now, opposite said, for it's, us, it's, it's a mirror image. Yeah, he's given a few, he's got, uh, oh, okay, sorry. Aconite, Belladonna, Arsenicum, Lexis, Hydrastis, but they're all with the, obviously the rubrics are, are there yeah. as well, you know? Uh -huh. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> But I tell you what, Sharon, I tell you something. Those homeopathic doctors who are in India and who are in Pakistan are very, very, very fortunate. And I tell you why, because the experience that you're getting and the reason you're getting the experience is because homeopathy is normal. It's standardized, it's open. Every other shop can be a homeopathic dispensary or a clinic or a pharmacist. There's no restrictions. People grow up with homeopathy. It's a world of difference, you know, from, from, from the West where uh, you're not getting maybe that much influx of patients. To see 50, 100 patients a day is from, it's, it's unless it's like uh, 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 homeopathy for health in Africa, for example, you know, where it's a, oh. it's a free clinic providing for the, for the poor and needy. But generally in practice, you, we're not seeing in the West that many patients. And mm -hmm. that's the, best mm -hmm. training you know it's amazing yeah. to know you've got patient after patient after patient isn't Very that true. clinical practice yes. and that's just amazing yes, yes. Yeah. yes i agree i agree completely and i am very very grateful uh for the exposure we have i really <clears throat> am grateful for it yes it's brilliant and i know and i know it's certainly like that with you you're seeing patients from all over the world as far as my my investigations go so <laughs> yes. you know you're doing really really well and it's brilliant because it's not about how many patients you can treat but it's about the fact that so many people are coming for help and you in return yes, yes. can help them yes very true, yeah. very true. <clears throat> and and um the thing is um uh we are examining and maybe we're seeing so many patients that uh, we can uh, spot you know, it's like uh, you have those uh, uh, spot the missing factor or spot the differences. Uh, you know, those small, small things we used to we have as puzzles. It's it's something like that because in when 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 the patient comes in front of us, we are able to differentiate very quickly because we've already seen so many. You know, and mm. um, I think that that um, finish that you we develop is um, is something that comes only when you get to see a lot of patients and Absolutely. it really helps us a long way uh, yeah you know going back to uh, case taking i was going to say that we should again i, I re-emphasize this because it's so important we should not overly get hung up on note taking case taking because it can sometimes create a distance between the patient because all they want to do is in the first 10 minutes they want to get things off their chest. They want to tell you how you are. And they need you to listen. Focus mm -hmm. and just remember the key points. The best way is to think of it like a like a signature, like your signature, you know? Think of mm -hmm. the highs and lows and highs in, in your signature can obviously mean, you know, when going into the uh, etheric field, you know, it's mental emotions. And, and the lows in your signature can mean the very, you know, uh, condition where the location is and, um, what makes it better and what makes it worse, you know, that type of thing. So <clears throat> modalities as such. Now, I'll give you an example of this. Um, <clears throat> I recently saw a patient. We had a very detailed consultation, but the remedy wasn't coming to mind. And I thought, this is very odd, you know, this is, uh, it's, it was like multiple symptoms which never sort of came together as such. It was very yeah. broken. Yeah. And I waited and I waited and I waited after about 40 minutes the patient right at the end the last sentence said something and immediately I knew what that remedy was but it had to, I had to wait for 40 minutes they always do this <laughs> they always do this 
<laughs> I I just had the same experience yesterday. I was there's this patient who came and he has taken all the possible antibiotics. He's a doctor himself. He's an allopathic doctor, and he came to me and he said, you know, doctor, I have this cough and this, and when we examined him, he was wheezing in both the lower lobes, and um, his pulse was. Um, what do you say a little high he was uh, his temperature was below normal i think that's because of the amount of uh, paracetamol he taken he mm -hmm. he i think he overdosed himself and um, i looked at this man and i was like oh my god where am i going to handle this guy and i was i was thinking of remedies like pyrogen and things like that and i said okay i think i'll have to give him something like that and uh, then i I was almost prescribing and then he said, you know, my wife has gone to Dubai. She's a heart patient and she's gone. And I was like, okay. He's like, I'm so worried about her, you know. I don't know if something happens there and things. Like that. So then I immediately changed the prescription to acid force. And uh, I called him up today and he's fine. So, they, you know, sometimes it's just the last minute they'll say something which like just changes the entire because history of the patient now now yeah. I, I know that it is not always possible if you have 20 people waiting outside and yeah. it's a hot day as well or you know it's just raining or <clears throat> just generally if somebody is really sick and you can tell that they're sick mm -hmm. or they're coughing or they're in pain then sometimes you have to uh, perhaps use different techniques but I, but i would say one thing is that i know people often ask me they say oh you're a homeopath and uh, you know what type of homeopath are you um i say what does that mean and it's like oh no are you classical what, what do you how do you work i said listen i have a toolbox and in there yeah it's so many variations and i use whatever it needs because at the end of the day the priority is my patient so if my patient needs a combination remedy it's going to be a combination if it's a single remedy it's a single remedy. my objective and my um responsibilities to get the patient better yes irrespective of of what what i use that's that's not in the equation so i'll give you an example it, it may be one has to use uh, dr shankaran's you know sensation method it might be one has to use um yan shulton's um you know the the, the cations or onions you know the minerals you know it might be yeah. um yeah. it might be a very complex remedy it might be very uh, frequently given it might be a single dose it really depends on the patient truly does you know, I, and i honestly Very mean true. this I honestly mean but, this um i think i i would like to even say that <clears throat> it's important for homeopaths to um try and, and study different skill sets hmm. you know sometimes uh, as homeopaths we tend to get um stuck and you know follow a particular school of homeopathy as a um, uh, how do i say as a religion mm. and uh, you know they they tend to get a little how can i say fixed um and not open uh, to other means or <coughs> ways of prescription yeah. or ways of thought and i think it's really important for us to uh, study different schools of homeopathy with an open mind um not judge and yeah. take um, whatever can be used by you because every person has their own constitution if i am uh, a homeopath and i'm a calcarea or if i'm a homeopath and i'm a pulsatilla or if i'm a homeopath and i am um i don't know a nax vomica all of us will have our own constitutions also deciding what type of practice we do and what are the things we will be good at if i'm going to be good at acute if i'm going to be good at chronic if i'm going to be good, good at mental uh, diseases if i'm going to be good at veterinary you know so all of us will find our own niche and our own uh, um how can i say hue you know uh, and um, i think it's really important for the young home pets to know that you know you you have to go and explore and study with an open mind every kind of homeopathy that you come across uh, you know an analogy here <clears throat> which people will resonate with i hope is that during the time of dr hanuman we had mm -hmm. you could say you know we have the decimal scale we have the centesimal scale near the end of his life we know that the lm scale was there 
then we have nosodes, and then we have sarcodes, and then we have plant-based remedies and minerals. It's really actually the same type of thing because one could say at that time, 200 years back, 200 plus years back, that oh, hang on, there's too many different variations with homeopathy. You know, there's you've got two different scales or three, let's say, and you've got then you've got sarcodes and nosodes, and you've got mineral remedies and plant remedies, and but. The, it's the same now that we have different techniques. The only thing that's changed is we have different techniques. But that yeah. doesn't mean that, that, oh my God, you know, that's homeopathy is very complicated. It's not because I find sometimes um, that recently, I give you an example. Um, I had to refer to um, Jan Scholten's periodic table for a specific remedy for a patient because it was only that remedy that I knew was going to work. And mm -hmm then I had to refer to a different remedy from the, you know, the, the animal kingdom for a different patient. And then I had to uh, give a detox to another patient. So, you know, this, you just have to uh, enjoy homeopathy, embrace it, embrace everything, take as much knowledge like a sponge, you know, yeah. and make yourself flexible, not because, not to feel uncomfortable, but do it for your patients. Yes. So that you have everything, you have more than you have, you have, you know, like another analogy, but you have Kent and you have Boyriki and then you have Clark and then you have Murphy. You know, you know what I mean? It's an analogy. Use everything. Be grateful. Embrace it and go for it. You know, I'm going to come to your library, Atik. <laughs> You're well, most welcome. <laughs> most welcome. <clears throat> so what about repertorization? What's your take? Oh, uh, no, very, very interesting repertorization. Now, it's very interesting that when we look at repertories, so I'll just take Kent's, Kent's one. I think it's uh, the other way around for you, isn't it? Yeah. When you see it, but yeah. Kent's repertory is very, very detailed. A lot of people refer to this. I refer to also, for example, uh, Robin Murphy's meta repertory, very big, you know? Mm -hmm. But what I have found is something very, very interesting. <clears throat> when you look at uh, Boyriki, for example, the repertory, sometimes rubrics will show that do not show it in other repertories. Now, yes. even though I know that, um, let's say, for example, in one of the, I won't mention the name, just for respect for, for all the authors, but one of the repertories, for example, uh, even though it's supposed to contain um, all the rubrics from, you know, Allen and Clark and Boyriki and Kent, I know it doesn't. Because when I go back to the original repertories of Alan Boyricky Clark, it's different, and you think, "Oh, that's strange. What well, that remedy isn't in in that in the, you know this compilation." So it's good to be able to repertorize, but it's good to be able to use multiple books. And over time, you'll need to use less and less books because you can start to remember the remedies, which which like like you do, Sharon. You know, you you know remedies, right? Yeah, the fourth generation, I think. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no comment. I'm, I'm not of you. I wish I wish my mummy and my grandmummy and my <laughs> great grandmummy was teaching me and I I I like it's 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 funny because of, uh, my daughter uh, uh, there was a time uh, recently that uh, they were they had measles and uh, I prescribed uh, Euphrasia to uh, uh, one of them, and uh, my nine-year-old daughter said, "Mama, what's the indication?" And I was like, "Really? You know?" And I wish, I really wish, I had, uh, you know, my parents teaching me homeopathy. You are so lucky. <laughs> no comment. It's I, again, you know. Okay, joking aside, it's it's very humbling. I tell you, but <clears throat> it's it's also a lot of work <laughs> trying yes, to remember yes, things. Yes. You, know? yes. you have to constantly be be at the books, and sometimes you know I don't want to. With all honesty, I don't want to read a book, and I'm thinking I don't want to do that, you know. And uh, it's because I have to do it all again and again. But again, I put yourself in in in, and you of course you're going to agree with this. But every homeopath, we have been given this great great blessing. I can't. I can't express that enough, the importance of that word. It's a blessing to serve humanity. So whatever it takes, yes. if it means at midnight you have to open your clinic because someone knocked on your door and they're in pain, be grateful that somebody asked for your help. 
that's what your life is about. We have, you could almost say we've sacrificed our life for the service to humanity, right? You know? Yeah. And, um, and that's very, very important. So, sorry, going back to your question on repertorization. <clears throat> Sometimes, I know computer programs <clears throat> are, are quite popular now and they're very, very good. Of course they are. Make repertorization very easy. But it's important always to know that you may need to cross repertorize as well different repertories. It's very, very important. And a computer is good because it speeds the whole process up. Looking through it is, is very time consuming. Although, like, like you, Sharon, you can't beat a book. You can't actually, you know, no matter you how long it takes, opening not a book, beat a book. I it's have, just brilliant. I am sorry, but I have gone the other way around. I think <clears throat> I used to be, I, I, so I studied Materia Medica in college. Okay. But then when I came out, I was very comfortable with the repertory. And um, I studied Materia Medica via the repertory. So I would read and study rubrics and I would differentiate remedies within the rubric. And uh, that's how I differentiated my remedies. So I, I used a lot of repertory and um, uh, much later, uh, much, much later, I think maybe 15, uh, 16 years into practice, um, I um, shifted back to Materia Medica. And I still feel that, you know, you, you have the Materia Medica for the bird's eye view, the macroscopic view, you know, mm -hmm. you have to have that. And you have to know, um, you have to, you have to be good at Materia Medica. I mean, it's like, and for me and now I feel that repertory should only be used as a guide, but never for prescribing. So... It's yes, such that's, an important that's... point, such an important point. <clears throat> I was talking to Dr. Farouk Master just two days ago, mm -hmm. and we got onto this question about repertories, and he said something which is so true, uh, which, of course, you agree with, I agree with. He said, don't rely on the repertory. He said, don't do that, because what happens is you actually, you become lazy, because it's very easy to repertorize, isn't it? It's just, yes. oh, that's the remedy. It's actually probably... It's very rare that I've actually repertorized and found that the remedy that's come up as totality or the most yes. weighted works. Yes, it doesn't work. yes, yes, yes. Like if I if I did yesterday's case of acid force on the repertory, I I don't I think acid force would have been way down the line. Yeah. Um, uh, another thing which I feel that um, uh, if, in fact. Um, what I've seen my seniors do, and I, I would like to share it with uh, you about repertories. We, we, we choose our repertory according to the patient in front of us. Very similarly, like uh, you had mentioned about different tools. So repertory also, we use it as a tool. So if I'm going to be prescribing on um, physical generals, then I will be using the Boga Boning Hussain. Uh, if I'm using modalities, I'll be using the BBCR. If I'm using it on clinical uh, signs and symptoms, I'll be using FATUC. So I will change my my um, the repertory I'm using very much uh, depending on the case in front of me. So if 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 it is mentals, I might use Kent or you know. So knowing your repertories and knowing when to use the NAIR and when to use uh, Boric, when to use all these rem uh, repertories is, I think, also the art of, uh, you know, picking up the right, uh, yeah, the right, like for, for when we, we have fevers, we use uh, BBCR. Okay, so it's, it's very good for acute prescription. So our, our repertory will change according to mm. the yeah, the, That's the a case really, in front really, of That's a really, really uh, good point, actually. Very, very important as well. Yes. <clears throat> you know, it, 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 yeah, it's, it's so, so important. And also, I mean, to make it very, very basic for the students of homeopathy, for example, when I talk to them or, I, or I'm talking to them or doing something, teaching them, <clears throat> one of the things I do to just to get them into starting is to think, don't rely on the repertory, but think of, we can use memory techniques in homeopathy when you're starting out. Of course, as you mature, you don't need them. But when somebody comes with any digestive complaint, for example, the word nickel comes to mind. And you mm. know, nickel is 
Naxalomica, China, Carbovage, Lycopodium. And in majority of times for acutes, you know, those remedies cover it, just as an example. And then you've got a uh, triple lag for somebody who's got anxiety. Triple lag mm. is, you know, Lycopodium, Argentum, Nitricum, Arsenicum, Aconite, Gelsemium. Triple lag meaning triple A, you know. But these are quick things. And, and what will happen is it'll make the student, I'm talking purely student, not homeopaths, as in qualified ones. Um, it'll make them open up the Materia Medica to actually try to remember that remedy. So it's like yeah. a, a foundation that you know some of the basic polycrests and you can move up from there, you know. And, and as you hone your skill, of course, then you probably don't need a book. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know? No, we never, we never, never need a book. But then, yes. Um, so um, well, you, never, never know, you know right? that I, I Fourth generation. You never know. <laughs> 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 I've been waiting twenty minutes for that. <laughs> Look at what's behind you, Arthur. Look at what's behind you. I'm already looking at that. Oh! oh my goodness. Yeah. The camera I'm, I, I'm, very, very I'm suffering the mock salt salivation, trust me. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, Dr. Sarkar, when I go to his clinic, his, his table is clean. He doesn't have books, he doesn't have a laptop, he doesn't have anything. He just has a prescription pad on his table. Brilliant. It's crazy. That's knowledge, though, isn't it? It's That's amazing. <clears throat> That's knowledge. Material yeah. medical knowledge is, is so, so, so important because, and it, it takes years, okay? It really does. If someone thinks that it's a year's process, it's not. Homeopathy is about, just like when you, when you do, um, uh, when you're in school or nursery and you move to school and then you progress to university eventually or college, it changes your way of thinking and you mature. It's the same with the Materia Medica. You open it up, first time you'll read, I don't know, Annika, you'll know a few things. You'll remember, oh, bruises, emotional or mental trauma, and that's it, and you'll forget. Next time you'll open, you'll remember a bit more. It takes years, yeah. you know? it takes 10, 10 years at least to get to know remedies, to be able to say, yes. oh, that's belladonna, or that's your pulsatilla, I think, you know, and, and you're nuts, yes. and whatever it is, you know? Yeah, today, today I've, uh, you know, I've, I've done just, I've just uh, shut the webinar for constitutional prescriptions, mm. right? Just like, 10 minutes before I yes, started I know, with you. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was uh, all about the different ways the remedies walk in, you know, how they walk in and how do they sit and uh, how is their handshake. And it, it, it and, and then I realized that um, as I was going through, I was like, I think this is getting too heavy for my, my, my viewers, you know, because there's so much we want to share. And um, for us, it is very quick. When the patient walks in, we instantly know. But then I think it takes a little time for it to sink in. And I think uh, you have to read it again and again and again and uh, see it again and again and again before it actually goes straight into your gut. You know, you know one way, Sharon, that, that may help, uh, which I've always found is that the role of observation. So when we observe our patients, just like you've given that example, but we should we should observe outside of practice as well. We should observe ourselves from a third person <laughs> perspective. I, I love stepping out of my, my body. I, I mean, I don't literally do that, but you know, thinking that I'm sitting here, for example, talking to you and what must I be looking at and how I look and how I'm moving. So I'm stepping away. Observe people around you. You can go shopping, observe them. You can go to a park, observe people. Because what will happen is you do that enough times over several years, of course, it's not gonna be months, but you do it long yeah. enough, let's say. Yeah. Then what happens when you start reading remedies, the Materia Medica, you think, oh, hang on, this is interesting because I know someone like that, or I, I yes. think I saw the person in the supermarket like that. Yes. Or I, I remember somebody shouting to somebody saying, I'm a businessman, do you know who I am? And you think, oh, hang on a minute, that remedy matches that person. Yeah. yeah. So observation. You're doing, doing it today with stop. actors. Huh? You're doing it today with actors. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I think it's really, really important. And it's such a beautiful tool, observation, because you learn so much about the patient, but it actually makes you stronger as well as a, as a practitioner, as a doctor, as a physician, um, because you pick up certain things and then you can also, you know, if you have certain observation, if you self observe, then you can also help try to remove any, any weaknesses perhaps that may be impacting your health, right? 
you know? Yeah, very true. But yeah, I, I, I find that more than anything, observation is critical in case taking, even in mm -hmm. like I've just linked to knowledge of Materia Medica, it's mm -hmm. so, so important. Don't be reliant. If the computers went down or there were no books available, all you have is yourself and your brain. So as much as you can, try to remember mm -hmm. things and mm -hmm. maybe use memory techniques to remember them. Like I gave you a very basic, yes. basic example of Do you little, use you know. that for acute? Do you use that for acute? <clears throat> Um, I, I usually don't need to, but um, it's, you know, really just to remember certain things. Yes. You know, like, mm -hmm. like acutes, complex acutes, acutes, somebody walks in and I think it's not generally within that, but I think, okay, nickel. But if it was, mm -hmm. uh, if, it, if arsenicum is also in that, I would change that technique to say Nicola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's an English uh -huh. name, Nicola, but I remember it as N-C-C-L-A, or I could add mm -hmm. another remedy to it. So it depends. Mm -hmm. You can make your own words and phrases and yeah. <clears throat> using a memory palace is amazing because yeah. you can compartmentalize and that sometimes really helps in a case because you're actually repertorizing as the patient is talking and that's brilliant. Yes, because yes. You're thinking, yes, yes. Oh, hang on. You're differentiating yes. them, and yes. You know that, for example, I don't know, uh, common remedy, lycopodium, you think, oh, you know, there's lack of confidence and there's this problem with the liver and, and there's digestive disturbance and it's, hang on a minute, this is all linking to one remedy. And it's mm -hmm. a beautiful process. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what about <laughs> mental cases? What about cases which are more to do with the mind and the emotions <clears throat> and the psyche? You know, I asked uh, somebody recently on that podcast, I asked them a question. I said, has mental health actually always been there? Or, mm -hmm. and we've just, and it's always been taboo. And, you know, we're just coming to terms with it now. We feel comfortable about talking because talking about it. And because my my understanding is that, look, if the miasm was there, yes, psychotic and syphilitic, then just those two, let's just concentrate. I found, and I shared this with you offline about syphilinum and its affinity to yes. mental health conditions, you know? It is, it's yes. amazing. It's, and this is my that was something I didn't know. Yes, it's that my was something personal I experience. Know. So, it's, you know, you won't probably find it in books, but it's it's an amazing remedy. So mental health conditions must have been there, right, for that miasmatic approach, because those miasms, yeah. those remedy, have a very strong uh, mental link to them, right? Yes. And, and now mm -hmm. we've seen that since uh, over the last several years, mental health is increasing with leaps and bounds. And I think one of the reasons for that, which I've seen personally, is that mm -hmm. um, Everybody, social media is brilliant. It's I love it, as everybody mm -hmm. who follows me knows, and as you know. But it can have, on, on very young, pure minds, it can have negative impact, where everybody wants to be a reality star. Everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to look beautiful. Yeah. And and that is, that's just one small aspect of mental health. I'm just using it as an example. Yeah. But that's playing on people's mind. Oh, I'm 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 overweight, or I'm too thin, or you know, why is my skin like this? And in the when I was growing up, it didn't matter. You got a tapa, no matter how what you look like, you know, you know, yeah. you got a tapa, you know, if you were naughty. But now it's it's just, times have changed because people are very much about what do I look like and and how will people perceive mm. me when it doesn't really matter to be honest. And but the world has actually changed, so, so far away from the reality. Yeah. It's so but far away from the reality. It, yeah. it, it, it's almost, Sharon, it's becoming a reality, isn't it, though? It's become reality. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> you know Unfortunately. Somebody, yeah. I think it was yourself, wasn't it, was saying, or somebody was saying to me that social media is such that, you know, you can, you, you can go to the shops and you can uh, post an Instagram story that you're walking to the shops and then you can be in the shops and take a picture of what you're buying and then a picture of the checkout. and. The, picture of loading the food in the car and it's like well, what's the point why are you doing it you know but that's yeah. social media isn't it it's like so i want to share it i want to share it and sometimes yes. uh, i get messages and it's like oh, Rajvi is share this. Writing, yes real versus real <laughs> <laughs> yes what does that mean versus the real a real on instagram yeah. in comparison to to what is the real the real aspect oh of the, interesting very clever yeah. 
Very, um, very nice. Nice, wow. interesting. Even I, it's the first time I'm hearing this. I like yeah. that. Well done, uh, Congratulations on that. That's a really good comment. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, it's it it really depends. We have to we have to deal with as far as mental health is concerned. We have to deal with it, mm -hmm. and we have to get people back to uh, Dr. Sharon. We have to get them back to basics. You know, that look, be grateful yes. with what you have. Mm -hmm. Don't look mm -hmm. up actually look down be humble because you'll mm -hmm. actually get everything you need if you're humble but if you mm -hmm. look up you'll never achieve anything because by the time very you true. achieve it life you know life is finite right eh? you know yes very, very true mm. there's this uh, i find this very often that the the most wise are usually the most humble and they're the ones who say we don't know anything funny but then yes that's the way they are you know, I've met, I tell you, some of the, nearly every single homeopath that I've spoken to on the podcast, or let me rephrase, every single homeopath that I have spoken on, on the radio show, or I've met, or mm -hmm. I've talked to them on the phone, they do actually have this. I've never seen an arrogant homeopath. I, don't, I, hope, I hope it's not the case with you either, you know, that you've seen <laughs> someone like that. They're all humble. They, they just want to help and do yes. the best they can, you know? You can't, yeah. It's one of the necessities uh, uh, for a, a person to be a homeopath. Yeah. I don't think you can be in this or you would want to or you choose a career like this if you didn't have that virtue. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if somebody said to me, oh, homeopaths are never rich, it's not about the money. I said, it's actually not about the money. You do well. You serve your, you serve your patients and, and God will look after you. Don't, don't. Don't take so much stress, you know. You yeah. do the best you can, though, but your heart must be clean. Have a yeah. clean heart. Have compassion and love. Have some empathy Have or have empathy for the patient. Talk to them. Give them the respect that they deserve, that they're due. And tell them that you're going to do your best to help them because, you know, words matter. Yeah? If, yes. If someone is suffering and you say, I'm going to help you, you know that all of a sudden 30% of their problem has gone because they think, oh, yeah. my God, someone's going to help me. And that that's really really important, you know. I am gonna keep asking you questions. Oh, I hope fine. that's go for it. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> now this is one question I want to throw back at you, Atik. I've been waiting to do it. Mm -hmm. Your favorite remedy. Oh my god, that's so cheeky. <laughs> I knew that. People are gonna say answer. I don't have a favorite remedy. I heard that answer before. I've heard that answer and I'm not gonna be satisfied with that. Oh my god. I have so many remedies going up and going on in my mind now. I don't know which one. Come Ooh. on. You know, I tell you, one of the remedies that I have great respect for is carbo veg, vegetable charcoal. Oh and the reason oh, for that yes. it's a lot Yes. Life giver, and it? it's life saving. It literally is life saving. Saves your life. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I just I think agree it's completely. So, so underrated. People sometimes say, "Oh, uh, don't use carbovage in digestive disturbance. Use something else." Is that? But if something works, why do you want to change it? You know, if the wheel is turning, yeah. you can add to the wheel. You can refine it. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, there's no point. I mean, keep if things are simple, keep them simple. When they and use the, the the time you have for the more complex things, isn't it? No. Can I share two tips about carbo veg? Go on, go on. I love your tips. I love <laughs> them. Okay. One is, um, you know, um, that um, during uh, COVID, um, I used a lot of carbo veg, and I use carbo veg in very, very high potencies, uh, 10M, 50M. And I used it when I thought the person may not survive. Another thing where I used it is when I saw uh, the arterial blood with increased carbon in it. Okay, so uh, acidosis, mm. okay, respiratory acidosis. Carbo wedge was the remedy of choice and it always worked it went with all my patients who had covid um it all it also covers chain stroke breathing so it actually 
covers that last gasping for breath that we have for patients. So I, if, if I hear uh, an emergency, I usually send CarboVeg in the highest potency I have to uh, the patient if they need it. So yeah, I, uh, yes, I agree. CarboVeg is an amazing remedy and I think it's underrated. It is absolutely. It's it's so so yeah. brilliant, isn't it? And in fact, we, dare I say it, but sometimes even other well-known remedies. We won't mention names of remedies, but perhaps sometimes even if they're indicated, they don't work. But Carbo Wedge is one remedy that never lets you down. It does. It always works. You know. Yeah, my my daughter knows it because <clears throat> we saved my fish with it. My Aww. fish was dying, and we could <laughs> we gave Carbo Wedge to the fish. That's brilliant. <laughs> See, look, we moved from farming. Life. We've moved yes. from farming to fish. Farming, yes. using with dairy cows to using it on fish. That's, this is great, you know. I love it, it. it really works. It works. You try it in the tank. It actually works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. I love that. You know, um, yeah. there's something very interesting I was going to ask, uh, say. Um, there is a film being produced, and it's called Introducing Homeopathy and uh, uh -huh. uh, it's uh, made in the it's being made in the us i will share okay. it on my on my um instagram and uh, okay. it's really powerful it's very cinematic but there's a lot of work going behind you know promoting homeopathy now because the the um the homeopathic research institute for example and and other places as well around the world mm -hmm. including the, of course mm -hmm. the uk are doing a lot of research on uh, the efficacy of, of homeopathic remedies, med mm -hmm. medicines, and we already know that Germany, France, India are leading the way as far as, you know, uh, mm -hmm. placebo trials are concerned, double blind mm -hmm. placebo trials and, and so mm -hmm. many other variations to those trials. And mm -hmm. it's really uh, taking a, a lot of uh, ground momentum. It's, it's called, mm -hmm. there's huge momentum mm -hmm. there, you know, and uh, it's, this film is, it took, took, it interested me, me because it was so, it's like something you'd see in the cinema. It was so it's so well made and professional, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I, like I said, I'll I'll share that uh, later on on my yes, uh, Insta. Please. But yes. um, yeah, please. But this, this uh, you know we should um, we should work together. <clears throat> Every homeopath is an amazing artist, or if they're not at the moment, they certainly they are painting their way to becoming one. Yes, we're all leaders in our own field. Remember, remember just remember that they. There's over 8 billion people on this planet. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know there's not enough homeopaths, but the people that you get, help them, serve them selflessly, get them cured, get them back on their feet, you know, because it'll just mm -hmm. keep coming around. And you never know one day when we need somebody's help, there'll be someone mm -hmm. there for us, naturally, with the circle of life that they'll say, yeah, I'll help you. I can help you, yeah. you know. Very true. You don't know. You really don't know who comes in at what time and helps you. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to share a, a little bit about my um, it's a very personal thing, but I think this is the right um, time to share it. So uh, I uh, had a very bad experience with the last pregnancy I had. And um, uh, during the delivery, I I lost a lot of blood and it was really, really bad. Okay, It was very serious and whatever. And uh, during that time, um, it's, it's, it's amazing like how every person that helped me, every, because I was in, I, I was in coma for like nine days, Ooh, okay. but every single person that uh came my I, I had a newborn baby i had me in the uh intensive care i had uh, my other children at home and um you know uh you're saying this so i'm i'm just sharing this that you know you don't know you really don't know where your blessings <clears throat> just turn around and um, give you back manifold I mean, it's, I, do, I don't know who took care of my child during those nine days. I don't know who took care of me. I don't know who took care of my other children at home. And each one had 
no problem at all. And this was all done by uh, patients who we had helped at one point of time. So I was actually taken care of by my patient community. So um, you may not receive uh, from the same place that you give, or you may receive from the same place that you give, but you do receive all the way back, you know? Yeah, and, that's, that's um, never wasted. Yes. It's, it's, They're never wasted. It's never wasted. It doesn't matter it's who. Actually, Sharon, it's very interesting what you've said, and because it actually goes back down, it goes to something very, very simple, and that is intention. Your in yes. intention must be good. Your intention must be clean. And and anyway, when mm -hmm. you have the pure intention in the heart, mm -hmm. it gives off the right yeah. uh, vibrations anyway. So you resonate with others, right? But the yes, heart yes. must be. You must have that intention, and you get rewarded. You know, you have, you get rewarded for that intention because there's no ego yeah. there. There's no nothing like that. It's all about let me get them better. Mm -hmm. You know, let me let if mm -hmm. I have to spend an hour looking at the materia medica because I can't remember the remedy, mm -hmm. so be it. Mm -hmm. But that always helps you in your life. You know, and uh, what more can you ask for? Very true. Because I I I really means like um, it's it's crazy how um means when i because of course i was as i said i wasn't in my senses but then every every mm -hmm. single aspect of my life was taken care of at that time mm. and it it took a contribution of many people you this is not a single person's job lots of people came in that's you know? so nice isn't so, it though? Yeah. that's so yes, nice yeah. it, is, it is and that's when i really felt that you know um, sometimes you get uh, you get your blessings in very different ways. It, it may not come as money, but then there are things that happen which you, which are just not explainable besides the fact that you have in some way maybe, uh, you know, enriched someone else's life at some point of You're time. You're absolutely right. I, I tell you, Saren, that, <clears throat> you know, when you really have the right intention and you help somebody, then God takes over and he helps you in your time yes. of need. That, that's it. That's all it's about. It's simple. It's not complicated. Do something good for someone and someone will do something good for you. Those are blessings. That's what I'm referring to. I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. okay. Favorite book? <laughs> not the favorite book one. <laughs> okay. I'll ask the next question, <laughs> but I'll first ask you which is your favorite book. Oh my God. Homeopathic. Yes. yes. Out of all the ones that are behind you. Oh. Which is the one that you love most? <laughs> My God, that's a tough one, you know. I'm just, I have to look at them now. Well, that's such a deep question. I think you have to take, you have to give the camera a little swivel and uh, show us. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. This is like, I'll post them on a reel. Shall I? I? I'll take some nice It's like for Thor eyes. <laughs> okay, but then, so tell me, which one is your favorite book? You know, I would actually say, probably, it's this one. <clears throat> it's his uh, New Old and Forgotten Remedies by Dr. And Anshit. I like this remedy. I, I like, sorry, I like this book because it's got cases in there as well, uh, according to the remedies. So I don't know, let's take uh, justitia. Not many people know how effective justitia is as far as coughing is concerned. It's got multiple cases, uh, whooping cough, I, it, it, was, it was the, uh, so it was the remedy during <clears throat> COVID again, no? mm. because it had the same, um, the same loss of smell yeah. and the same, uh, go, <clears throat> you know, the viral going from the nose straight yeah. to the chest. Yeah, it yeah. was, it was, the remedy for yes but I, but I do love i do love all the books uh to be honest i do you know one of my favorite books though which is not to do with homeopathy is it's a book written by trevor cook okay. and trevor cook was the owner and uh, the <clears throat> principal at the british institute of homeopathy and he wrote a book which is called uh well it's called samuel samuel i was just looking at the book it's up there somewhere samuel Hahnemann. and okay the reason I like that book is because the patron for um, the British Institute was the 
third great grandson of Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, direct lineage, bloodline. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so when Dr. Cook wrote the book, he had access to the family. He had access oh. to the great third grandson, he had to the wife, to, to the archives, to things that had been passed down to the family. Mm -hmm. So it makes a very, and I'll post a picture of that as well on, on so people know. But um, it's a very accurate account because it's involving the family of Samuel Hahnemann, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. And, and I wow. love that because it really paints a picture. I'm going to go off on a tangent here like I, like I do sometimes. But Samuel Hahnemann <clears throat> was a doctor who was persecuted all his life for his beliefs. But he, he loved God. And because of that, he never gave up. He loved God and he loved humanity. Very two very important things. He wanted to help people. He wanted to serve humanity. And he found, as a doctor in those days, going back to those days, what was being done was not medicine. And, and he was blessed with, you know, an inquisitive mind, and it led to Sincona Bark, and it led to medicines and provings rather than remedies, right? And we know the rest. But he was persecuted. In his life, he moved 30 times. In his life, he was abused, and he was uh, laughed at and, and, you know, victimized. Can you... Um, believe that someone in that position in those days we're talking over 240 years now <clears throat> managed to or 200 200 plus still managed to produce books with so much detail of remedies i mean wow you know i mean let's just take an example um from boyriki because i know you you love boyriki right yes <laughs> <clears throat> let me choose let me choose one right so you remember mercurous yes. core I've opened up, okay, corrosive. This yes. salt leads all other remedies in tenesmus of the rectum um, and Bright's disease, gonorrhea. This process is slow but sure. Uh, albuminari in early pregnancy. How does somebody get to that? And then on top of that, they went through head, eyes, nose, ears, face, mouth, throat, stomach, abdomen, stool, respiratory, urine male fever modalities relationship dosage i mean come on this is we're talking one remedy there were hundreds yeah. someone who was persecuted who was victimized who had to move home who wasn't very well off he wasn't rich certainly not far from it and yet he managed to produce something that 250 years later i mean what would we be without these books uh, sharon we wouldn't have a clue what Nothing. homeopathy is right Nothing. Amazing. I'm just, it's just so, I just reflect over this and I think somebody managed to do that. Talk about commitment. We just have an argument sometimes and we think, oh my God, I can't do anything today. This guy was moving house, lugging his family around because of the fact he couldn't find work. And, you know, he was laughed at and he was called this and that. And, and, and like I said, you know, persecution on those days. And he still came up with something. That was so yeah. profound that no one has probably matched it since, you know? Yeah. Amazing. Very true. So what about mm. Rima Handley's book? Do you like it? Sorry? Rima Handley, the later Hanuman. Um, I, you know, I stick to, I'm a bit, bit of a, I'm, I must be getting old, I think. But I, I stick very much to some of the more common ones, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this book, uh, Rima Handley, uh, the later Hanuman, is um, the life story of Hanuman in France. Okay, and it's his last two years of prescription. Those are the that's the, how he the LM time, the combination time, you know. Yes. Yeah. So that's when he was prescribing LM with mother tincture and using different methods and there was some which were oral and some which were olfactory and some which were applied yeah. and it's amazing me i mean it's like uh, uh, after i read that book actually that's one of the books that really changed my um approach to homeopathy you know when i came to know that oh this is what dr hanuman did uh, at you know the prime of his life and after trying and testing every single thing and being yeah. 80 years old yeah. you know yeah, so absolutely. um that's that's an amazing book um <clears throat> it's, yeah it's you know, a lot of people say that oh, 
Dr. Hahnemann was very much, um, you know, it was a single remedy or it was only centesimal. It's very far from the truth because when you read this history, very far from you know, again, yes. near the end of his life, why LMs? Because they're so gentle, you know, they can be often yeah. repeated, you know, and, yes. and they're amazing for mental health complaints. When I treat for ment emotions and mental health conditions, I, I use LM scales because they work. They work magic. Patients tell me. I don't have to prove anything. They come back Thanks. to me and say, it's worked. Very true. You know? And my goodness, the use of sulfur. I wish I could emphasize it more. You know, we teach everything about Materia Medica, but then, oh, <clears throat> how well does sulfur work? Yeah. Sulfur is, um, we had this conversation, I think, the other day. Sulfur to me is like, um, you've got a you've got a rug, let's say, and what you yeah. do is you lift the rug up, and you sweep the the dust that's underneath, so it's all clean under the rug. That's what sulphur is in my mind. I don't, yeah. I, I'm not, I don't need to go into more detail, but you know that's that's sulphur. So it's like, yeah. oh, someone is not responding, or somebody needs this as the first, as long as it's not a skin condition, let's say, or suppressed condition. But okay, that's that's the remedy and you know as a yeah. result they'll respond to other remedies probably yes. three times faster than they would have very it's such a very it? it's a brilliant remedy and it just clears up so much <clears throat> yeah. means uh, at least 50 percent of the symptoms go and then then the other 50 make sense yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah it's, it's an wonderful. amazing remedy it's wonderful i remember my uncle in nairobi used to use sulfur he, as an initial he's also homeopath your uncle is yeah, my uncle, a my, my uncle uh, homeopath, I, and um, I think I'm my cousin is a homeopathic doctor. My grandfather's brother was a homeopathic doctor, as well as wow. my grandfather. Fourth generation, yeah. So, uh, generation of generations. <clears throat> if you look, actually, if you look on my website, uh, like treats like, you'll see the history. The photos are up there. Yeah, you've you've got a family tree there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have a have a look. I'll check that out. I'll wait for your comments. <laughs> All the photos I, I managed will to check get the photos out. and put them up. You know, including my great I... uh, my great great grandfather. He's up there. He was a herbalist. Wow. <clears throat> wow. It's not a very clear photo because obviously we're talking yes. 1900. Yes, but yes, yes. It's not bad. 1900 in India. So, but it's not bad. You know. Amazing. Amazing. But uh, um, what, what, what were we talking about actually? Um, I'm going to ask you another question. Yeah. So what is it that you look out for when you want to get someone on your podcast and you want to interview them? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's something to do with magnetism. Because I saw, let's use yourself as an example. I see, saw you on Instagram. <clears throat> and I, I saw some of your posts. I think there were some posts, if I remember back anyway. And I got in touch with you. Yes. And that was it. And I just felt it was right. And now, of course, now the, the show is where, you know, people are asking to come on it or <clears throat> it's a natural flow of order. So, for example, I spoke, speak to one guest and it leads to another guest, you know, and it leads to another guest. But uh, my objective, again, is to promote if you look at the, the show on, on, on my website, Like Treats Like, you'll see that it's not just students, it's, it's not just homeopath, it's students, it's home prescribed, it's, it's everybody. So there's nothing specific because everyone has a story. I give you an example. There was a, a Malaysian um, homeopath who who's she's studying, Nicole Frankie. I just uh -huh. recorded the podcast with her two days ago. She's in her third uh -huh. year of a BSc in homeopathy. Uh -huh. I wanted her on the show because I wanted to talk about homeopathy in Malaysia and her experiences, which are actually quite a lot considering she's a student. And it was lovely. It was so nice. So it's wow. sometimes it just, just um, I, I just have this feeling, I suppose. I don't want to make sound like I'm special or something or I have superhuman. That's not what I mean. It just, I don't know, it just feels right, you know, just feels, feels right. And are you looking out for any collaborations? Collaborations. <clears throat> I I am very much interested in collaborating. I think there's a lot that can be done. More homeopaths need to be out there 
on, on social media, certainly, because it's a tool that we can use and it's free to promote to talk homeopathy. We should collaborate on seminars, on lectures, on podcasts. We can do so much. Let's work. My, my motto is let's work together to serve humanity. You know, let's do it together because it's just so much fun. Collectively, we can be so much more successful, you know? Wow. You've got the intent for sure, Atik, and I've, I've seen your work, so you are surely on that, uh, you're right in the same direction as your intent, so it's, I know, you're going to get somewhere. Oh, that's very kind I don't know what, what the journey holds, but then I'm sure you will do amazing things. Oh, that's very kind of you, I don't know what to say. No, no, really, yeah. really. It just, um, I love what I do. I, I, it's in my, literally, it, I mean, it is, it's in my blood, homeopathy, you know? <clears throat> and um, I, I love to promote it. Why not? You know, when somebody comes with cancer, kidney cancer, or like a patient did of mine, and they had a few days to live, and now, 15 years on, she is in her 90s, and still a mm -hmm. patient of mine for other reasons. I'm just giving one very small example, but... You know, come on, that's motivation enough, right? It's not, about, oh, it's totally. not about me. I'm not talking about me. I'm just saying it's motivation enough to say, can homeopathy do that? Someone said you've got three days, go home, be with your family. And 15 years later, she's phoning me up. Okay, Dr. G, do I do? You know? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, so, so these are the miracles. And it happens and every homeopath has that in him or her. It just have to... But you have to work hard. You do, it's not yes, just going yes. to happen. You got to use even even. It's like saying, um, you 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 close the front door at home, but you don't lock it, and you say koi gal koi gal I speak Punjabi, right? Koi gal God will look after me. But that's that's not how it works. God doesn't work that way. He says, well, there's you've got a door and you've got a key or you've got a latch. You have to do your bit. So the same is an yeah. analogy to homeopathy. You have to read. Materia Medica, you have to read it till you're there's, sick. You keep reading the there's books. There's another thing I've, I've been noticing about your books, Arthik. Hmm. There's another thing I've been noticing about your books. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. One is that they have been, um, uh, how can I say, roomed in. So I know that they're not just there, they've been read. And they don't have any dust collecting on them which means you've been reading all of them i i can't stand it as well anyway i don't like dust but okay. anyway yes i read them <laughs> but i keep them very clean so i've had this for quite a while now but i really look yes after. i can see that yeah uh, the pages some of the pages do crinkle they turn when i'm in a rush but i always make sure because i don't want to buy another one right it's expensive enough <laughs> you know but very I expensive want to keep them. i want to keep the first one it's Sharon, you're going, to, you're going to agree with this, okay? So when you buy the first book, like, look, this is um, uh, Boyerakis, right? Now look how yes, old yes. this is, and there's so many new versions, and the pages, but it's it's fine. The, the spine is fine. It's it's readable. I don't want to get another version because I, I like it. I don't like the new version. Yeah, I like these. It's, I don't like, it's yeah. not. It it loses the essence of Boric. Yeah. It, it, it just it just messes it up. The original books are are much much better, you know. It, they're just yes. they're just amazing. Yes, yes, very true, very true. So uh, you know, like uh, when I read uh, Mater Medica, and I think, oh my God, these things have been written two hundred and forty years ago, and then you read, oh, you read things like glaucoma, and I'm like. How the hell did they know it's glaucoma? Amazing. Come on. Like Amazing, here we, had, we do peripheral vision and we have these <clears throat> grand, uh, you know, yeah. tests that we do for it. Or we, they, like, how, what amazing clinicians, you know, what amazing clinicians they were. You know, the 19th and 20th century mm -hmm. was so, so revolutionary, weren't they? Because... Mm -hmm, yeah. These were people who, I mean, just look at the, the periodic table by Mendeleev, you know, I mean, wow, you know, just, I mean, I can't get my head around it, you know, it's so, you think, how yeah. did you come up with something like this, you know, yeah. and, and 
we're talking homeopathy, of course, Hahnemann, and then Clark. And when you read, when you read Clark's book, right, the Materia Medica, let's say, and this is what I, my point again with Clark was that he he writes with history. So if we look at just an example, um, uh, this is uh, Lexus, right, and he says uh, when Harry first experiments were made he was botanizing and uh, zoologizing on the upper Amazon for the German government except his wife and all about him were natives who told him so much about the dread of Surukuku that he offered a good reward now that's a story that's bringing the remedy to life you know when you talk about life remedies yeah we're talking all those years ago my god these people were amazing I'm telling you we need to celebrate them these were the homies. Yeah, totally. You know, they literally gave up everything to give us what we have in a I, book form. I agree you know? completely. We're talking about remedies. We're talking about, you know, what are the, uh, we're looking at Lexus, let's say, and we're thinking, okay, does this match the totality of symptoms, let's say, you know, or does it match even some of the case? He's talking about the history. He's talking about natives in the country and how they were talking about, that gives the remedy life it doesn't it it makes it tangible yes, you can touch you can touch the yes. surukuku you know yes 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 it's amazing i love it i love that history and 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 i don't think we're ever going to forget that because these were we the, shouldn't the word master we shouldn't. Is, is right here they were masters yeah i means for me when i when i look at the history of homeopathy um i also look at the mistakes that we made okay mm -hmm. and um, and the things that made it come flourish you know yeah and i keep hoping and wishing that, that you know we home paths do go back and read the history because we should not make the same mistakes that the the previous generation made and we should make the right mistakes that the previous generation made you know mm -hmm. um for example um uh, the the uh, what do you say the history of the downfall of homeopathy in America and how it happened and what exactly made it happen you know make it happen mm. and how Boric wrote and how the Boric Materia Medica came about there were study circles Burnett Clark Boric they sat together and they studied together they shared their clinical notes it means brilliant. come on if we don't do that as homeopaths and if we are not sharing our clinical notes with the others on this large platform and if we are not exchanging information we will never reach where we should be you know so the successes of homeopathy and the failures of homeopathy in the past in the history I think are very important for us to know and to study and to to make us aware that we should not make the same uh, mistakes, you know, yeah. like this thing about having schools of homeopathy, okay, particularly like, you know, you have schools which have, oh, we do only centesimal or we do only LM or we, we only do mind and, oh, we do combinations or whatever. All these different schools, this is what broke homeopathy. It broke the entire spine of homeopathy, you know. So we should not be doing that. And I think it's really important for us to understand that America would have been a very different place for homeopathy if that didn't happen, if and if homeopathy didn't break down from within, you know. I think you know it's very, very. <clears throat> it's such an important point that you just raised, and 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 with the example of the U.S. But I find that. You know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's it it is actually about us. We can have, <clears throat> excuse me, we can have amazing ideas which will really change homeopathy. But it doesn't mean that you remove you forget the foundation. The foundation yes. will always be there. Um, yes, I'm, I'm looking in front of me on my on my right to to the phone. Uh, I there's Jan Scholten's periodic table of elements, and you know with the plants and minerals, and Mendeleev. Was was the one who created Ben Shelton improved on it or he added to it. That's great, but we should never forget that we should try as much as possible to keep life simple, okay? You know, when somebody comes to you and they're in agony and they're in pain, we don't want to overcomplicate the case. We should keep things simple as much as we can or if we can. Mm -hmm. Every case is different and unique, so uh, it's just a statement, you know? 
but try to keep things simple because homeopathy is actually very simple, right? Match yes, the remedy is. to the patient, give a dose or two, and cure will happen. And it's really, how is that ever going to change? You can't change that because it's, it's always been there. You can improve on it right, by adding techniques where the patient doesn't yeah. respond, which is what we've had. But we need to work together. We, there's, we, look, we only have, I don't know how many years I've got as a homeopath, right? Same with you, same with others. So whatever years we have as a homeopath, let's just enjoy it and make it work together and not get caught up on this is my book and this is your book. It doesn't matter whose book it is. Just share it. Give it all out. Whoever wants to soak it can. Who doesn't, doesn't matter. Eight billion people, you know, yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. We can only treat. How many can we treat in our lifetime? Isn't it? You know, it's not right. going to be 8 billion. Right. It's going to be a tiny amount compared to that. So there's, there's, a, there's plenty of cake for everybody. Plenty. Yes. Yes. Lots, lots of cream, yes, which, which is actually making me very hungry, to be honest. But anyway, yeah. <clears throat> wouldn't, mind, wouldn't mind a cake. So is there anything else you would like to share with our uh, viewers and especially my viewers? Because I want them to hear you and I want them to know you and I really want them to see the work you're doing because I think that your contribution uh, to homeopathy is the word I get is selfless it's amazing so is there something you'd like to share with us uh, there's a few things first thing is and this is totally against what you've just said but <clears throat> What would be good is uh, I, I like to promote homeopathy and I like to promote homeopaths. So check out my Instagram. That's very, very important. Follow me on my Instagram. It's at like underscore treats like. Second thing I'd like to say for your listeners is that I've known you for a few months now, maybe six months, something like that. Yeah. And there is, there, and that's always going to remain that every time I speak to you, you remind me very much of me. That doesn't mean I'm anything special. That, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the passion, because I know my own passion. I can talk about that. I know that I'm, I want to promote homeopathy. If you sent me something today, I'll wake up, I'll be up at night until I've done it, until I've put it out there, you know, because mm -hmm. it's about homeopathy. So you have that and you have, I think you're going to become more than you are, an exemplary homeopath around the world because <clears throat> you have this very um very humbling but very magnetic way of, of engaging and and i think that's very very important nowadays because you you have to people have to you know when you go to a doctor you can like them or not like them but for a homeopath there has to be a connection because no one is otherwise going to share any emotional profile with you yeah if they don't like you because you've said something very arrogant, they're going to think, I'm not telling you anything. Who, who are you? You know, so that you have to, that humility has to be there. So, you know, for your followers, um, I would say you're very fortunate that you are following Dr. Sharon and, uh, you know, help her as much as you can. So, yeah, that's that's what I'd like to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Atik. And I, I really would um, like you to, uh, if, if anyone... Uh, connects with you to collaborate or to come on your podcast, please, please, please um, let me know what are the things you're actually looking for. <clears throat> because you said uh, um, what you said, but that's, I, I, I really would like to know a little more about what you're looking for. Is there, is there a variety? Is there something you want to know? Is there something you want to put out? Is there a message in general? What exactly is it? The message is the objective of, of the podcast is to make homeopathy tangible. Now, what I mean by that is we read homeopathy. And again, I'll, I'll use a book. We, we read homeopathy in the book. And of course, you know, the respected William Boyerke, we, we don't, you know, we can't see him. We can't hear him talk. But we can hear, I, I'll just give you an example. We can hear you around the world people can hear you they can hear about what tony pincus is doing or dr shankar and i'm making it tangible that people what does homeopaths what do they sound like what do they 
you know, what are the harmonics? What is their life story? <clears throat> what motivates them? What drives them? It's fine. I, and I just use this as an example purely. It's fine looking at the periodic table uh, by Dr. Jan Scholten. It's great. And it's fine seeing his picture and it's fine, um, you know, seeing, <clears throat> reading his book but, or books. But what does he sound like? What is his journey? You know, what is that vibration that motivated him to do something? So that's the tangible part of homeopathy, giving a voice. And the, the show is, the, the podcast is very much now the voice of homeopathy on radio and podcast because it goes out on radio as well as the, you know, uh, on all the podcast platforms as well. And uh, it it's that as far as what am I looking for? <clears throat> I'm I'm not fussy. I'm really not fussy. I'm just looking for people who may want to come on and share their experiences. In fact, I was going to ask you, uh, and this is happening live for those who are get excited by the live things like it's happening right now. But it, what would be nice, Dr. Sharon, is if you had some patients who were willing, and it's all audio based, but if they were willing to talk about treatment, because that's literally ground grassroots level, it will inspire sure. people. You know, sure. let's do a podcast sure. with five or six of them, you know, sure. with you and let me talk to them and, 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 and let's engage with them. And what was your healing journey? And we can do many of those. Sure, right? sure. We'll do that. Yeah? We'll do that. Because someone sure. suffering from the same condition in, in, in a developed country or in an undeveloped country who's suffering and has found no relief will think, oh, my God, oh, this is this is something. Maybe homeopathy can help me. Even if you say yeah. one person, right? It's something. Yeah, sure, sure. We'll do that. <clears throat> sure. Great. It's 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 been. Uh, I, I I hope it's been interesting. I don't know. It's been it's been a pleasure. I I don't know about interesting, but it's been a pleasure. <laughs> I've enjoyed it, and um, it's nice to see you on that side. Thanks. Because the last time I was the one being interviewed, and uh, you, uh, you you are an amazing listener, uh, Atik. I'm not as good as you in listening. I I keep putting my own thoughts and opinions inside, but then you you uh, were amazing. You um, and yes, I'm very very satisfied with what you said. Okay. I, I love your answer, and yeah, I I. I, I really loved everything about today's uh, conversation. No, thank you for inviting me. It's uh, it's been great, and uh, I hope this is available afterwards so that we can share with uh, yes, our, yes, yes. our yes, yeah. we, said, we shall share this. Great, uh, it's been absolute pleasure. Oh, hang on, sorry, I was in podcast mode there. You have to say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to I'm going to end the show. It's been an absolute pleasure being on the show. Have it, eh? I think you can end it. I want you, I want you to say exactly what you normally do. <laughs> so, well, that was uh, me, Atik Ahmad Bhatti, with Dr. Sharon Ali for, um, on this Insta Live today. It's been an absolute pleasure to be invited, a great honor for me to be invited onto her Insta Live. She's an exemplary practitioner and um, yeah, I look forward to, to doing more things with her, collaborating on projects and, and, and webinars and so forth. And for the listeners, I would say to you, the message I would give is that, look, homeopathy is literally, truly life-saving. It is like taking a magic pill, literally. There is so many blessings associated with homeopathy and it can take you from the brink sometimes and totally change your life, mental, emotional included physical of course so if you have not yet tried homeopathy give it a go you won't be disappointed i would have clapped <laughs> <laughs> we shall we shall keep in touch uh, we'll get off line now but thank you so much Artik. and uh, for all those who are watching please follow Artik on like treats like and please listen to this podcast they're very interesting and he gets amazing um, um, people and um, amazing homeopaths on his podcast and I, I, I've really enjoyed listening to them. So thank you very much Artik for being on my uh, Insta Live and we shall stay in touch. Absolutely. You're back on the show in January. I will email you the date.
Yes, I will. Surely. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night.